Today's video is about what you can do to hopefully receive a layer zero airdrop. This has the potential to be one of the biggest airdrops after Arbitrum. Welcome back to Dynamo DeFi. As a reminder, in today's video, I'll talk about several crypto protocols, but this isn't a suggestion that you do or do not invest in any of them. This is for educational purposes only. Now, let's get into it. First, let's go into a bit of background on what layer zero is, because that's going to be important to understand how you can hopefully qualify for this airdrop. Layer zero advertises itself as an omni-chain interoperability protocol. And basically what that means is that it's an infrastructure layer protocol that allows you to build cross-chain applications. So for example, you swap an asset on one chain with an asset on another chain, or you provide asset as collateral on one chain and then borrow on another chain and much more advanced cross-chain applications like that. Basically, Layer Zero saw that we are living in a world where there are many different blockchains people are using, and so they built a protocol where you can build an application that isn't tethered to one specific blockchain. And many people apparently agreed with that vision because they were able to raise $135 million last March, almost exactly one year ago. And their valuation was $1 billion at the time they raised that money. So if you've heard this, maybe you're saying, well, I would like to receive some layer zero tokens. And so let's talk about some things you can do to hopefully set yourself up for an airdrop. And by the way, this is all speculation. We don't know whether they'll do an airdrop, what the criteria would be, or whether they've already taken a snapshot, but we'll do what we can to set ourselves up for it. So first thing, I have a document with nine airdrop checklists on my Substack. That's two more than in my previous airdrop video. So there's nine now. And one of these is the layer zero airdrop checklist. So I'm going to reference that in this video. And if you want to see it for yourself, I'll link it down in the description. So the first thing that we'll want to do is we'll want to make a cross chain swap using Stargate. Stargate was the original flagship application built on layer zero, and it allows you to swap all sorts of assets, but especially stable coins between different chains. And, and you can also swap Ethereum between certain chains, but it's primarily used to swap, for example, USDC on uh, Ethereum to USDC on Arbitrum to USDC on Avalanche and or to a different stable coin. So first thing you wanna do is swap on here. And what I like to do is do a number of these swaps, right? Don't just do one, because so, sometimes these airdrops will look for, have you done it multiple times and have you done it consistently over an extended period of time? So when I have to make a stablecoin swap between different chains, I often use Stargate just to make sure that I'm getting those reps in. Next thing that we may want to do is we may want to actually purchase some STG token. And now I'm not suggesting you do this to invest in Stargate, although maybe that's something you would decide on your own, but you could purchase a small amount. That's what I'm doing, purchasing a small amount of Stargate tokens and then staking it for governance. And then I'm planning to vote on some governance proposals. If you vote on governance proposals, it shows that you are the sort of person that they might want to hold their token because rather than selling the token, you are staking it and you're actually participating in governance. And if you are distributing a governance token, wouldn't you want to give it to people who are participating in governance? Next thing that you may want to do, and again, this is all in the airdrop checklist, is there's a layer zero bridge on testnet for bridging USDC from the Gwarli testnet, that's Ethereum, to the Fuji testnet, that's Avalanche. And so next thing I would do would be I would acquire some USDC on one of these testnets and then make a cross testnet swap. In theory, it should be free. You know, it just takes some time to get the funds on these different chains, but we're doing everything we can to hopefully tick that qualification box to get the layer zero airdrop. Next thing I would do is Layer Zero has a bridge between Ethereum and Aptos known as Liquid Swap. I would make a bridge on there. So you can see a lot of these things relate to cross-chain bridges, right? Because that's basically what Layer Zero is about at the end of the day. So next thing I would do is I would transfer some assets between Ethereum and Aptos, just using all of these different bridges. The next thing and final thing that I would do is I would make a cross-chain swap using SushiSwap. Many people don't know that SushiSwap now offers the option to make a swap between one asset on one chain and another asset on another chain. And this actually uses layer zero on the back end. So just trying to use as many applications that integrate layer zero as possible, I would make a quick, small cross-chain swap using SushiSwap. 
The next thing I'd note is that there are several other upcoming Layer 0 applications, and once those launch, I would definitely use those as well. One of these is Altitude. That's going to be a bridge to bridge things cross-chain, again, using all the Layer 0 bridges. And then the other application is known as Tapioca DAO. They have a very strong social media presence, and Tapioca is going to be an omni-chain money market. So I would definitely use Altitude and Tapioca DAO once both of those applications go live. As I find more things that you can do to hopefully qualify for this airdrop and others, then I will continue to update them on this airdrop checklist on my Substack. And that's everything that you need to do to hopefully qualify for the Layer 0 airdrop. If you want more content like this, be sure to like and subscribe. And until next time, this is Dynamo DeFi.